Cape Town and its policy of impounding minibus taxis. Yesterday, he saw the National Transport Minister, Sindasiwa Chukunga, saying that the city was acting outside of the law in impounding taxis. She says the city must release one of those taxis without any conditions, but the city says it's merely implementing the law and that the minister has misunderstood it. Tabojo Kass is the founder of Public Interest SA. Tabojo, good afternoon to you. There is so much with this. You seem to be backing the city of Cape Town. Why are you backing them? We're backing the rule of law and order. Um, nothing less, nothing more. And to the extent that we do that, we want to also emphasize that the uh, public accountability is a double-edged sword. In other words, much as we expect uh, the city or administrators to obey the laws, those who are aggrieved and want to exercise their right to protest, they should do that within the confines of the law. The city of Cape Town is doing that which many other cities, including the city of Joburg, Twane, and Ekrulin and Devon, ought to have been doing long ago because the, the taxi operators and drivers have become a law unto themselves. And this has gone to a point where even the minister of a police thinks or deems it fit to negotiate with people who break the law. There is no way in the world where those who are constitutionally empowered to uh, to 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 to, to uh, exercise, I mean, to implement the laws, that is, the police start negotiating with criminals. That has that doesn't happen anyway. Is that the kind of country that we've become where lawlessness has become something to cause it cause it up to, or is it because of the need to? To, to get the support of the taxi operators and owners ahead of an election. This must stop. And the Minister of Police, as well as the Minister of Transport, know very well that the city of, of, of Cape Town is doing that which everybody ought to be doing and emulating. So, I mean, the Minister says that the city is acting outside of the, I think it's the Land Transport Act, um, and this can get very complicated. But she says they're acting outside the Act. Could it not be the case that she's actually right and that the city is acting outside the law? It might very well be, but I don't think so, Stephen. Remember, there are bylaws. Bylaws don't get enacted in, in a national law. Bylaws are things that get to be determined at the uh, advice and, and, and free, um, uh, I mean, at, at the advice as, as well as at, at, at the liberty of the, uh, the city administrators. And for as long as those bylaws are well within the, the confines of the constitutions, there's nothing that should stop the city of of, of, of trying to do that. In fact, even the city of uh, the province of Gauteng has does implement impounding of 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 of, of taxes. It is just that it is not done to the extent that the city of Tshwane wants to enforce the laws. And there is nothing that um, really uh, bothers of bothers society or bothers society than to see a minister causing up to those who break the law. Uh, we live in a country of lawlessness, Stephen. And when you give let the taxis run, our taxi operators and drivers run are more. Uh, in the manner that they do intimidate people and even make life miserable for those that they are meant to assist, that is the commuters. It is just this kind of impunity must come to an end. And I'm, we are glad that the city of Cape Town is taking a stand and say this far and no more. Is there not an other issue here? And the taxi industry argues that the um, taxi, the minibus taxi is impounded, right? You have to pay a fee to get it back. But it is the driver who's broken the law, not the owner. Should maybe, if a driver is always breaking the law, or if a public transport driver, if a minibus taxi driver goes through a red robot, well then they should be arrested rather than the taxi being impounded. Because if the taxi is impounded, Stephen, it's the owner that suffers. Stephen, that is nonsensical. They know very well that the owners put pressure on the drivers. They tell the drivers, I want 2,000 rents, let's say 2,000 rents a day. I don't care how you... you, you make that. Whether you do that without the proper braking system on the car, I don't care, as long as you bring in 2,000 at the end of each day. Whether you're overloading or whatever, or you're underloading, is none of my problem. Whether you are um, whether you've got a ticket or not, that's your own problem to sort. And the drivers are under pressure, underpaid, and they're also trying to make sure that they meet the targets and, and eke out a, li a livelihood out of uh, the, the, the work that they do on behalf of those very same people who now want to hide behind the saying, arrest the drivers. That they know full well. That is why they encourage the drivers. Otherwise, the drivers will be behaving this way. The drivers are always under pressure. And they themselves, before they became... Um, uh, 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 operators, they were drivers themselves. They were the ones who were, they know how they, the environment works, the environment is all about, and they're the ones who actually also commit all this, uh, breaking all the, 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 the laws. In fact, we, we should be uh, expecting them to say, we 
empathize with the commuters, the inconvenience that they're causing the commuters. But why do they now want to even ban buses, which have got nothing to do with the strikes? Why would they want to go and damage trains and other means of public transport, making it difficult for citizens to get around? It, it, they, they, may, they may issue statements that San, Santago has done to uh, uh, castigating all that, but they know who are behind those, and they're actually sanctioning that. They, they're keeping a blind eye on all those uh, criminal conduct that is taking place. And we cannot then uh, want to criticize the city of Cape Town for enforcing the, the bylaws and the laws of this land. You know, we, the time must come where we side on the we take a side with those who do well and those who want to protect the interests, the constitutional rights of commuters and citizens. It cannot be that every time there's a taxi protest, buses get banned, taxis get banned, people can't go to school, kids can't go to school, people can't go to work. If you find, if you drive your own car, you might actually find yourself at risk of being attacked uh, because you're just going about your day. It is the, the taxi industry cannot be a law unto himself. Up to what point will somebody tell them in, the, in their eyes that this must come to an end? It might not be politically correct, but it has to be done and it has to be said. Government says it's going to, and the transport minister says they're going to bring into, the, uh, bring into law the R2 system. And this would have a license demerit system. You drive badly, you'd eventually lose your license. The minister claims that taxi drivers will obey R2. Do you believe that? No, I don't. Stephen, before you even get to R2, just get in between, let's choose a, uh, an arbitrary destination from Bree Street rank in Johannesburg to Parkhurst. At any given day, see how many taxi um, taxi um, minibus taxis um, operate in that space we, who are un, that are unrolled to SD, that that shouldn't be on the road and the authorities do nothing about it and they're risking the lives of the commuters every time there's a taxi accident and many lives are lost we all lament this and the other we fail to understand that it is because there's no enforcement of laws there's no enforcement of bylaws that get to be where we find the kind of impunity where reckless or, or unroad with cars are found to be uh, on the road you've got taxi operators who use one uh, taxi uh, permit to actually operate more than one uh, vehicle that should come to an end. It's all about enforcement. And the corruption within the policing system is from Metro and SA police. They have got vested interests where you find some police or Metro police and even subs police do operate a minibus taxis. And thus there's a conflict of interest. When they're supposed to enforce the, ru the rules, they know that it is not in their interest to do so. So the city of, of, of Cape Town is leading by example. That should be emulated and not castigated as the Minister of Transport and the Minister of Police seem to be doing. Tabokho Kass, thank you very much indeed, the founder of Public Interest SA. Really do appreciate the time. Strong view there, as you can hear, on that, to those uh, developments.